All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Professor Gregory Howes here, the uh, Department of Physics and Astronomy here at the University of Iowa. Uh, we have an exciting evening planned for you tonight. Uh, it's our annual physics demonstration show uh, where we get to really show you a lot of uh, exciting and fabulous uh, effects of science, things that, that really happen. Uh, when I teach classes here at the University of Iowa in this room, uh, we use demonstrations all the time so that we can show how physics works and show you all of the exciting and, and wonderful things that we learn from science and that we can do. Um, we, uh, along with uh, Professor Vincent Rogers over here, raise your hand, uh, he and I are on faculty and we often and almost every day take advantage of a tremendous resource here at the University of Iowa, Mr. Dale Stilley. He's the instructional resource specialist. He's the mad scientist. He's the person that makes all of this wonderful stuff happen. He's, he puts together these great demonstrations for us for our classes every day. And, and once a year, he gets to present it to all of you, ladies and gentlemen and kids of Eastern Iowa. And I'm glad you all brave the cold to come out here. I know it's a bit of a brutal night to be out. Um, but let me go ahead and pass you on to Mr. Dale Stilley to uh, start the show. Thank you. So, my fellow scientists, which is what you all are right now, because uh, about 30 of you will be asked to come up here and play with me uh, at some point in time. But before we do that, I want to make two announcements. One is that stay around until uh, the end, which is going to be about 10 minutes to 8, I hope because then we will have two raffles, one for the telescopes. If you didn't get your dollar in for that, go ahead and do that. But after that, we'll have uh, uh, also a drawing for some free items. So make sure you stick around for those things. Also, at the end, we will have some of the things out here that we have showed you that you can actually come up and play with, OK? So uh, one of them is like this one here. This is a pile driver, which means that you know we have a heavy weight. We drop it. We smash stuff. In our case, we smash pop cans. So, you know, for us, we uh, send it down and we see if we can do better all the time, which means that you just keep packing more and more weights up here. And uh, you get another pop can and you do it again, okay? So this will be set up over here afterwards. We'll have a set of stairs so that the littler people can get up and do this exactly just like the big people, okay? So make sure you stick around for some of this stuff because it's uh, going to be a really uh, a nice thing for you guys to do. All right. One thing I don't want to hear about is smash fingers. Make sure you don't put your fingers down there when you let that thing go, OK? The other thing is our mantra for the evening, do not try this at home, OK? So everybody say that. Do not try this at home, OK? Because uh, we're supposed to know what we're doing up here most of the time, and even then we have accidents. So um, just basically, uh, if you see something here, there's a couple of things that I'll tell you that I will tell you how to build them if you give me an email address or something, or come and see me at the end of the program, OK? But I'll tell you which ones those are. But the other stuff, don't do it at home, OK? Somebody will get hurt. Now, I need two volunteers. Joe is going to pick them. Quickly. Uh, in the gray and yellow, uh, right here. The and uh, you come here, sit on this. In the, uh, Put your feet up on the, uh, the, on the stool. You get to hold both of those, one in each hand. <laughs> OK? OK, you get to sit up here. Put your feet up on there. Yep, turn it so there your feet are up there. Hold one of these in each hand. OK, so now you guys, how far out can you hold those weights? OK, it's like that, good. So what we're going to do, Joe, spin that gentleman over there. We're going to give you a little spin. Now what I want you to do is just draw those weights into your chest, OK? We're going to get you going a little faster. Put your arms out. <laughs> so now, draw them in, draw them in, draw them in. And now put them back out because you can slow yourself by putting them back out. OK. This is conservation of angular momentum. The Winter Olympics just got over, right? Everybody has seen this. The ice skaters do this all the time, where they have their arms out like this. 
When they want to spin really, really, really fast, they start moving their arms in like this or in closer to you like this. Or they put their arms up like this, right? Or this Olympics, what else did they put up like that? Their legs, that's right. So Vincent, if we could show that, because we actually have YouTube video of that, right? But watch how fast they can get themselves to spin up if they put all their weight or all their mass on a very thin place going up and down on their rotational axis. Oh, that's okay. We can do it. Is, it. is it on? No. Okay, so go. Oh, you got to. Uh, Oh, hell. Here, you gotta uh, turn it on. First technical difficulty of the night. Let's All right, but well, we'll take care of it. I will, I will continue on before uh, we do this one, okay? So anyway, what the deal is, is just as these two people up here have shown you, anytime you have your mass out here, it takes a lot of energy to make it rotate, okay? If you put all your mass in, like this, and rotate it, oops. I see why you uh, did that, I was uh, stuck. If you put all your mass in at a very concentrated center, then you can spin very, very, very fast without having to worry about what's going on on the outside. Okay, so this is what, is, uh, what we have up here. Uh, the figure skater. Watch her legs and her arms as she starts to spin very, very fast. Okay? The faster she wants to go, she has to put all of her mass in a very small area up and down. You can see she's spinning very fast now that she has a leg straight up off of the other leg. Okay? At the end of it? Do one more. Do one more? Okay. All right, so here she goes again. This is the uh, program. You can see when she's leaning out like that, she's not spinning real fast for a figure skater. It's only when she goes and puts her leg up, her arms up, everything is one small bar going up and down. That's when the speed really comes in. Now this actually has applications beyond just figure skating, all right? If you look out in astronomy, you uh, deal with things like pulsars and black holes, things that are said to be spinning very, very quickly. We can actually measure those. Some of the stars spin at like uh, a thousand times a second. So uh, they spin very quickly. But the thing is, instead of two-dimensional like we have here where we're just drawing the weights in and then putting them back out again. Now we have three dimensions where we collapse the whole sphere. If we do that, this is what it looks like for a neutron star or a pulsar, okay? Spins up very, very quickly. If I open it, it slows down again, okay? So it's all about where is the mass concentrated, in the center or out here somewhere, okay? If we do it again, one more time, you can see that it gets to be so tense that uh, unless I let it slow down a little bit, I can't get it all the way into the center the first time. So, Anyway, that is something we call conservation of angular momentum. Basically, making things spin faster by moving them inward. So thank you guys very much. Thank you a lot. So that one you can take away. I need this one. Now here is your first lesson on don't try this at home. Because, you know, we always can deal with rocket power, right? So if I have my little rocket here and I hold on to it, I should be able to. But then I have to turn it the other way to slow down, right? All right, so don't try that at home.
Yeah, you guys didn't know that you were going to be part of it, right? So, Vincent, can you pull this up to like the third uh, hook there? All right, well, another application of mechanics, which is a part of physics, is well, something about surface area and pressure, okay? How many of you have ever seen anybody sit on a bed of nails or lay on a bed of nails or get, anybody here sleep on a bed of nails at night? Okay. I have one up here. In fact is I have a bed of nails sandwich. So what I need is my two gentlemen from in there who aren't out here right now. Come on out. Uh, one on each side, pull that up. I'm going to sit, you go this way. So here is my bed of nails. I'm going to have to uh, divest myself of some things here. Hopefully I won't destroy any microphones when I poke nails through them. We want you to be able to see the blood basically. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, so here's the deal. Yeah, Greg, you're going to have to, actually, you're going to have to help me. I got this. You're going to have to hold me. Okay? So, uh, so here's my bed of nails, the first one. And Joe, is Joe there? <laughs> Vincent, I need two volunteers. Uh, not very big ones, though, I hope. two guys coming up. Okay, yep, I'll need this. All right. So, Joe and my other fellow student. This is my sandwich. So now I am between my bed of nails. All right, good. Got it. All right. All right, and now one more. Where's my other one? You can move the, uh, you can move the bucket down. All right. All right. Take a bow, guys. Ah! No, I'm good. So go ahead, get them off. All right. All right, got it? I'll get him up. I got it. All right. All right, so, any blood? All right. So now this stuff can go. So here is the reason there is no way for me to get hurt on that bed of nails if I do it correctly. And the reason is this. It all depends on how many nails I have per amount of area that I have, okay? Or the amount of nails, the amount of pressure point that I have per surface area. So if I can spread myself out far enough, I can be in contact with enough nails that no matter how many pounds they put on me, as, as, you know, I could get four or five kids on there uh, and still be okay because the total pressure is still only going to be like a half a pound per nail head. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean anything to the little kids. Here's what they like. Here is what happens to me when I am between the sandwich, you know? I can run it like this, and I gotta press really hard before I break the balloon. But now, if I do it like this, you can see that it doesn't take very much before it pops down here, and it really doesn't take much back down here to pop at all. Now, if we have any brave ones, you can come down and sit on this. Any brave people want to do that one? How about if we do this one? Okay. No? All right. But it all depends on how many nails that you have, because this one is half the amount of nails of this one, and this one has half the amount of nails as this one. Okay. So however many nail points you have, that's how you want to have more and more and more, the more 
weight that you have on top of you, okay? Very good. That's all we need for this. All right. And this. I need to have my microphone back on. All right. For this demonstration, has anybody here heard of uh, vacuum packed food? Few people. We're going to vacuum pack some kids. So I need three volunteers that are not, they have to be about this tall, but they can't be as scared to be in a garbage bag. Okay? So go ahead and pick three. Okay, so here's the deal. We're going to have you get in one of these. I'll do here. Let me do the center one. And uh, you do the one on the outside. So here's the explanation. I need uh, two more guys on each one of these. So Joe, I need two more guys out here yet. So you need to you need to step in that one. You need to step inside this one, and we'll get you right in the front here, okay? So just step right inside the bag, all the way down. Yep, all right? And we'll let you move around so that we can get it up around you, okay? All right, very good. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's good, that's as far as we're gonna go, all right? All right, so now we need to turn you around. What I want you to do is hold my tube, if I ever find it. Found it. You got it now, it's uh, stuck. There we are. I need you to hold this in one hand like this, and then your other hand over it like this, against your chest. So you're gonna have to kneel down and do that. All right, you need to face the audience though. So you need to face out. There we go. All right, so where's my second guy over here? What we're gonna do is we're gonna close you up first and then we want you to stick your head out the top, all right? So Joe, double that, put it around there. Double it, double it, double it. stick it around there. In, 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 and. Over his head? Nope, 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 now, just pull. All right, now stick your head out. Stick your head out, all right, so now round, round his neck with that. Okay, you can stand up as far as you can if you can. All right, that's good. All right, kneel down a little bit. There, go ahead and kneel, that's all right. All right, so now we should have it so that. Is this one ready? You got your hands ready? Here we go. All right. Again, can't have stuff, you've got to hold that in your hand so that the air doesn't, the air can come out. Okay. That's good. Go. That's good. All right. You got to hold it so that the air can come out with this thing. All right. Can't have your hand in the front. There we are. All right. So you can see this gentleman here. He can't even move. Try to move, try to move your arms out. Yeah, see, vacuum packed. All right, I'm gonna set you up again. All right, just hold right there, okay? Now the nice thing about vacuum packing is that with the air, with the uh, garbage bag on them, they have like 25 tons of force pushing against them. So they can't move their arms, they can't move their legs until they release the vacuum. And then he can do whatever he wants. You can stand up. All right. So once we release the vacuum, then it's all right. He's fine. But uh, basically, that is the whole deal. When you vacuum pack something, you take the air out of the inside. You have tons of force forcing you on the outside, OK? We'll have a bigger demonstration of this a little bit later. But this is just to get the kids, uh, you know, some of the fidgety ones, we quiet down a little bit. So all right. I thought that was a torture device. 
Thank you. All right, so thank our volunteers, our three brave gentlemen here. Thanks, guys. All right, so those can go out and get changed. All right. Uh, so you're doing this one, right? I got this. All right, we got it? I got it, Joe. I'll help you. I'll help you. Go to the front. Go to the front. Go to the front. You really want to come up? You think about this? Okay. This is not a bad. This is not a. This is nothing dangerous. As Greg and I are both professors, he always gives us the easy stuff to do. Okay, but. It should be interesting. But so what we're going to do is we're going to show you that what we call walking the spool. Anybody here have a yo-yo at home? Ever play with a yo-yo? You actually make it do all kinds of tricks, walk around and things like this. Well, those two physicists are just common everyday classical physics. So who's our other volunteer? Did you come up? I thought we had two people. Somebody just said, you're not coming? OK, you got, got a veto on that. OK, go ahead, grab this. Grab something. Okay. Okay. So this demonstration is a very simple thing. So let me just show you, for example, you hold this spool here. Just hold it for me and just hold her spool. So if I do, if I do something like this and I pull on the string for this, for this bicycle, notice that the lever arm is there. And even though if I'm pulling it, it'll come backwards towards me, okay? But if I turn it at the right angle and I pull on it, it actually goes forward. And so what we're going to show you is this little, this little simple trick. This is also related to torque. Torque is related to angular momentum, which you saw spinning around. Torque is the thing which actually gets things started. But once it starts, you don't need torque anymore. You just leave it, let it run, and it has angular momentum. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask these guys to pull on this. And if we do it properly, so I want you to come here. And you pull on this at two different angles. Let's put this okay, like this. And come over here, hold this. And now pull it gently. And he's pulling it, and it's going backwards. OK, I don't know if you can see that, but um, let's go over here and do the same thing so everybody can see it. It actually rolls toward him. Now if you pull it down below, Scoot on your knees and pull it. Can you pull it down lower? How low can you pull it? Next to come now, pull it towards the top. At some point, I'll help you. If you pull it this angle, it comes up. But if you go back and pull it this angle, it goes backwards. It's a very simple example. Go ahead and demonstrate it with that as well. Okay. Okay. So this is what a yo-yo is doing. When you control a yo-yo so it walks and you move it around, watch the angle at which the person is playing with the string, because that's going to determine whether it walks towards the, the, the yo-yo player or, the, or walks away from him. OK? OK? Around again. See so if you can get it to, to walk away from you. Don't, don't pull it that way. Just, just, you don't have to go that far. You can still pull at this angle, right? A little more. Right there. That's the right angle. You got it? Okay, good. Okay. okay, so the next time you're playing with a yo-go, remember it's all about torque and angular momentum, and there's nothing much more to it. Okay? And of course, that same torque is what uses you to get started if you have a bicycle. If you put your foot on this pedal, you are, why don't you try to push the pedal down like this to get started? Anybody know? Is it, where, where's the best place to put a pedal if you want to get fat, go fast? Here, here, or here? Which way? Right, right there, OK? So if you put it there, you supply more force directly down this, and you can provide more torque than if I try to put it here, 
I can't get going. If someone asks you to open a door, right, and the hinge is on this side, what side do you want to push the door on? You want to push it away from the hinge as far as possible. If you try to push the door closer to the hinge, it takes a hell of a lot of work to get it going, right? More force, but the same amount of torque. The same torque is needed, but over here, less force, and you still have the same torque. So that's the idea of this, okay? All right, very good. So this is really just a segue to get Dale back out here while he goes and... Uh, All right, does anyone know what this is? Can you switch it off? Uh, in the gray sweatshirt right on the edge there. It's a hovercraft, right? All right, we've seen hovercraft. You get to, to stand on, or you, you get to uh, float along. What you're doing is you're floating on a cushion of air. So you can float, you can take a hovercraft, you can, you can cruise along on the ground, but you can go slide right over onto a lake. You go up to Lake McBride, you can go right down the beach and right over onto the lake, no problem, because you're not on the ground, you're not on the water, you're on a cushion of air that's holding you up. So I need one volunteer from the audience. <laughs> of course, of course. Thank you, yeah, Vincent, all right. Uh, I'm gonna take the pink in the middle way in the back there, yeah. All right, come on down. <laughs> All right, so here's our hovercraft. So why don't you come on, have a seat on this, uh, this bucket. All right. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn these on and get you to float. Now what I can do is I can just nicely and easily push you right along here. Push you back this way. There she goes. And she's off. We need somebody to set those up. All right, we'll keep going back. All right. All right, we'll shut you down here. There we go. All right, can we give a hand to our volunteer? So that's, that's all about air pressure and a cushion of air that you can float on that can support you. But air does much more than that. In fact, uh, there's something called the Kawanda effect. And what it is, and we're going to have a, a demonstration right here of that, uh, what the Kawanda effect is, it's a way that when uh, air flowing quickly over uh, some curved surface like a sphere, it'll hold that sphere into place because the sphere wants to move away higher, uh, lower pressure on the inside pulls it back in. And we're going to demonstrate that. So I need two volunteers here from the audience. All right, let's see here. Um, oh boy, uh, let's see. Okay. Oh wait, no, we need somebody who's a little taller. So he's going to have to stand, uh, well actually, yeah, in the red, red, red hair. Come on, come on over here. All right, and one more. Let's see, how about in the tie-dye shirt? Come on down. All right. All right, so come on over here. What I want you to do here is turn around. Here, let's, let's put these in your shirt. You can hold on to these for later. We'll just, uh, here, look, look up. I'm just going to put that there. So it won't bother you. Now, you're just going to hold on to this. You're going to need to turn around and look this way. Look at the audience. Now, you have the important job of holding up these balls when I turn this on. Okay? There's air blowing out here. If you want to if you don't believe it, you can see lots of air. Okay. So what he can do, oh. Want to keep it vertical, straight up. Turn around. Point it straight up. And those balls just stay in that stream of air because if the ball gets pushed off to one side, Low pressure pulls it back in and it keeps it there. This one, same thing. I can push it a little bit 
If I push it too hard, though, I can knock it right out. That's no problem. But the nice thing about this is that you can hold on to that ball of air even when you tilt it. So now I want you to just carefully tilt it that way just a little bit, and it stays there. There we go, and we can turn it this way. Turn it back that way. Whoa, we lost it. But that is the Kawanda effect, and it all has to do with the fact that air that's flowing faster has lower pressure, and that's what causes this ball to stay in the stream. All right, we thank our volunteers. Thank you. So hopefully, <laughs> ah. eventually we'll get what I want. You can hold on to that. You can just keep that. All right. So now we can get three going simultaneously. But what we should also be able to do is get another one above it. And I think I know what's wrong. I don't need that much airflow. So eventually, you know, of course, in practice, this works perfectly. But you should be able to get multiple things blowing in the same airstream because of the fact that just because the ball in the airstream lets air by it as it goes around the top, we should be able to put more stuff in there. I got one to work and that's all. So, uh, you know, we'll just blame it on the uh, physical plant not providing the great air pressure that we need, right? So. Uh, close. Anyway, all of this is due to the fact that air goes around circular objects and when it does that it tries to create a slipstream and that's where these things like to stay, is inside that. <laughs> They'll go back and forth because the balls are the same weight. All right. We'll give it one more shot here. We'll try this. Yep. We'll give up. That's all we're going to do with it. All right. So, yep, take that one out. Bring this one in. Right to the middle here. Good. Give me that. Take Joe, help him take this one off to the side over here. Yep, like that. Okay, so now this one. I have a very special liquid here in that it allows me to do time reversal, okay? What we're going to do is, you can see on my televisions here, we're just looking at the column of ink and it looks like it's all water. But what we have is a rotating cylinder on the inside and on the outside it's just a container and in between them we have a wall of fluid about like this, wide, okay? What we're going to do is, Put some ink in here. And uh, for this, I need one volunteer who is high enough that he can reach this and turn it very slowly, okay? Joe, if you are, uh, who's here? Get me a volunteer, Greg. 
a volunteer. There we go. Great. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to put you right back over on this side over here. We're going to put a column of ink in my liquid. And this column of ink, you know, if I'm real good, it might look kind of straight, but probably is not going to be that great. All right. So there's my column of ink. All right? It's sitting in this liquid. What I want you to do is just turn this and count five times, five rotations. So there's one. Keep going. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, now step back. Here's what she has, okay? It looks like it's a mixed up mess, right? Here's where the time reversal comes in. Five times back the other way. So there's one, two, you guys can count two, three, four, and this is the one. Five. Oh, we didn't do a very good job, did we? No, it's on. It's on. Well, we'll try it again. If at first you don't succeed, we'll give it another shot, all right? Because it works. When it works, it works good. So we're going to do a big column of ink again. All right. So go a little faster this time. One, two, three. We're only going to go four. Now go back the other way. One, two, three, four. And here is what's left of our column of ink. If we get it right, you can see that half of it is still here. Okay? So that's our time reversal. What we are able to do is actually use shear forces in the liquid to isolate that thing. When it spreads out in a shear plane, so it's actually in one plane as it goes around there, just like a cylinder, we can mix it back the other way. It comes back and we can almost reassemble the uh, column of ink that we started with. Okay? So that's what we call time reversal. Basically, you can reverse time, put things back together after you jumped them all up. Okay? All right, so we're on to bigger and better things. For this one, we need two volunteers to start with. And Joe, go ahead and pick them. Give her a big hand. So just, just pull. There you go. Can't believe it, did it? a cylinder here that has two halves, okay? Just like when we vacuum packed our students, we are going to suck the air out of between these two halves of the cylinder. When we do that, we have air pressure that's going to be holding this thing together. And it's going to be a lot. Can you hold that for me, please? Just hold on to it. It's not going to hurt you. All right, good. It's going to be a lot, uh, so much in fact, that what I want you to do is take that handle. You get over here. Take that handle. Pull. Pull. Come on, I can't believe you can't get it apart. It's nothing but air holding it together. Now, if you think about this, we live on a planet that has an atmosphere. Our atmosphere is pushing on us at 15 pounds per square inch. If you figure out the square inch, uh, 
the square inches of the uh, vacuum, uh, the area on the inside of this thing, you'll find that not only can they not pull it apart, but if they had three other friends helping them, they couldn't get it apart either. Because there's about 450 pounds of pressure holding it together like this, they have to overcome that to get it apart. This is All right, not guys. Just due to shoe now, wear with poor traction. Yeah. yeah. Now, just hold on to it loosely. Because if I let the air out, you got to face your audience. If I let the air back in, it just falls apart. All right. Now here's where we need six volunteers. And you have to have good shoes. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. All right, come on up. All right, I have to get this untangled without dropping it on the floor. All right, just hold on to it. Hold on to it like that. Just like that. Bring it. To me, bring it to me. Can you show them the plates open first? No, not yet. It's easier if I do it. Yeah, it's easier if I do it this way. All right. Okay. All right. Do we have our six horsemen? All right. Now we're gonna have an anchor man. You mean anchor man? All right. An anchor woman. All right. So you guys can take these long ones here. So here, nope, you need it this side here. All right, so you three guys over on this side of me, stand over there, go over here, go over here, go behind the big guy, go behind him, behind him, behind him, grab one of these ropes. So you grab this one, you get over here and grab this one, good, all right. Now don't hold there, you want to hold here. All right. Okay, so originally when this was done in the uh, 1750s, 1800s, something like this, when, when first vacuum pumps were first developed, a guy by the name of Magdeburg made a set of hemispheres that were one meter in diameter, so like uh, 39 inches in diameter, right? He had teams of horses that couldn't pull this apart, okay? These are our horses tonight. <laughs> They are going to pull and see if they can get my little plates apart, uh, which are, you know, uh, less than a tenth the size of what Magdeburg first started with. So, don't pull real crazy, just kind of <laughs> lean back and pull against each other, okay? Are you ready? Tug of war, don't let go. Pull, 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 pull. Are you pulling? Nobody's pulling. I don't feel nothing. Pull harder. All right, so now here's the deal. Just kind of let up a little bit. Same thing again. If I let the air back in and if you listen, you'll hear it go. We're apart, okay? That's all it is, is air pressure holding these two plates together. Thank you guys, you did a great job. You can see that I overbuilt that thing so that, you know, I could put a lot of uh, big muscle out on the ends there to keep that together. All right. We are on to, yes, that. And uh, just put that right in the center. Bring my, um, somewhere I have my two gas cans and my uh, bottles. They're probably under the glycerin. Okay, so tonight we had actually two YouTube videos to show you. This is the precursor to the second one. So what we have here is just another demonstration of air pressure. Just how much, um, just how active our atmosphere is. How much we swim around in every day. 
if you think about it, you know, I can, uh, you know, do pop cans to like nobody's business. Joe, I need help. They're gonna pop. Just hand me pop cans, as many as you can, fast as you can. All right, so I can do pop cans. Okay, we can get those. We can get little ones. We can get bigger ones, you know. We can do two liter ones. Oops, sorry. And one over here, right? So we can do that all day long. It's just nothing but air pressure sucking those things together. Actually, the air pressure doesn't suck it. We suck the air out of the inside that's pushing out. And the air pressure pushing inward is what crushes the can. Well, we can do this in a more relegated fashion because we were just using plastic bottles, but we don't have to. It doesn't make any difference how strong something is if we get the right kind of pressure going, okay? So there's gallon cans. Yeah, we aren't gonna throw these out into the audience, don't worry. <laughs> All right, so there's gallon cans, and you can see as, I, as more and more air comes out of the inside, this kind of keeps collapsing. Well, obviously, you know, this is the physics department. Little gallon cans aren't good enough. So what we have is 55 gallon drums, all right? This one is gonna take a couple seconds, so don't worry. It'll work. Are you ready? Everybody ready? Nobody get scared. Nobody get scared. Yeah. Not gonna hurt you. All right, so what you've seen is that, and we'll, we'll refer back to the three guys that we had in the plastic cans, all right? For this can, once we start sucking the air out of it, if we get all of the air out of it that we possibly can, there are 24.91 tons of force pushing in on it like this. Tons, okay? which means that basically this is not so much different than the human body. If you take the torso and add the cylinder for the arms, the cylinder for the legs, and the cylinder for the heads, you have about this volume, okay? So just you walking around every day, 25 tons of force is pressing on you all the time. You don't feel it because you also have air pressure on the inside pushing out. But if we were to take that away, you know, like in a submarine, this is what happens to you if you go too deep, all right? So be aware, the atmosphere is a powerful, powerful, powerful thing that we have. We'll show you a couple more examples of that in a little bit. All right, so uh, these can go away. Who wants this? Yeah. Is this number seven? Is this a rocket car? Okay, Mr. Pryor. You can take them back in that way. Take them back in that way. Oh, yes, I forgot. See, you, you didn't remind me about the video. Because we don't have to have small cans like 55 gallon drums. Yep, we can see it, go. So here's what's gonna happen. All railroad cars are cleaned with steam. And if they forget to leave the steam vents open when they clean the car and they shut it up and it gets cold at night, this is what happens. All right. You don't want to be in there when that happens. All right. But this is, this is what they do. This is what happens when they have defective valves or when they don't take the proper safety precautions. All right, that's good. So it's not just small cans, but things uh, larger all the time work on this principle also. All right, so now, Mr. Pryor. Is he down here? Where's my volunteer? Good, sit on this. 
We need to get you with safety glasses, with ear protection. We need to have our sail, which went away from me. Here it is. What I want you to do first is just move it up about right here. So now, here's what we have. Air pressure. We have a pressurized cylinder here uh, that we are going to use for this demonstration. The first thing that I want you to do, and this is going to be loud, so you people, in, especially in the front, want to plug your ears, OK? Now, what I want you to do first is to just squeeze, reach back, and squeeze those handles together. Uh, you want to do it with the other hand, though, OK? Everybody got your ears plugged? Here we go. Do it. What did you feel? Cold. Cold. Yeah. It's because any time you have a pressurized gas, and you release it, let the pressure off, it gets cold. It gets really cold. In fact, if you would have watched here, let him do it again. If you watch here, there's a white spot that appears because it's so cold it condenses the water in the air. OK? So that's, that's the first part of this. The second part is that you know if you have pressure, you've got a rocket. So now back it up. Here is your instruction. You hold down on this until about the end of the bench over there. This is the only break that you have. So hopefully those guys will catch you if you miss it. All right? All right. To the end of the bench, and then you can let off and break. So here we go. It's going to be loud, and it's going to be, you guys want to hold on to your stuff there. So OK. Boy, he's not, he don't steer very good, does he? <laughs> All right. You got to have your feet on the pedals. Don't worry about stopping, man. We got gotcha. you. All right. Good. Everybody survived that? All right. So what the deal is, we have pressurized gas in the cylinder. It comes out at a very fast speed this way, which pushes the bike this way, because we have equal and opposite reactions going on. Gas going out high speed this way, bicycle going slower speed this way, or a rocket if you want to go that way. Okay. But realize that since we're using compressed gas, whenever we release the pressure on the gas, the gas gets very, very cold. So whenever you have your hand out behind that thing, watch out. It's going to freeze off, OK? So don't do that. That's another one. Don't do this at home. You want to do it, you come and see me. All right. What do we got? Oh, good. Uh, so I need that right up against here, though. All right, bring me the, uh, the cans, and I need four volunteers. I need the uh, candles off the big, uh, the other table, too. Four volunteers. Quickly, quickly. Here's your can. Put that on. Here you go. Put this on. All right. So help me with the candles. Just put them across the bench here. All right. So all of you have to step forward a little bit. So here's the deal. All of these are little vortex cannons, OK? If I have my big one here and I shoot it, people out there are feeling this, right? All right? And even you guys over there should be able to feel that one coming by. All right? Try it now. All right, so here's the deal. There should be a column of air coming out of these things that allows us to 
blow out candles. So you stand over there. I want you to stand right here. Right, right there, yep. I want you to stand right here. And you stand back right there, OK? Now, you can see that each one of these guys had the pail with a hole in it. Uh, if they uh, pop the membrane, you know, hair moves. I want you guys to try to blow out your candle. You got to aim good. Contest who's first. One guy left. Blow out your candle. Ah, excellent. Right. So here is what it looks like, because it's just not a single column of air. It's actually a smoke ring that comes out of this thing, all right? So guys, here's what I want you to do. Bring your pails over here. Sit it right in the front. Sit it right there. Good. Like so. All right, you go over there and shoot out above the audience. Next one. All right, you go over there. OK, you stand right in the center. All right, right here. Does. All right. Help me with this one, Joe. So guys, move ahead a second. Move ahead. Move ahead. Move ahead. It might get hot, so watch out. All right. So you've seen that they come out. They actually come out as a little puff that seems to roll like this when it moves, OK? Now I've got the bigger, the bigger one here that will show you really what it looks like as they come out over you, OK? Should be good. Oops. Got it? All right. Hopefully, hopefully that didn't get unplugged. All right. So here we go. And we're going to tilt this up a little bit. All right, so here's what it looks like. You guys over there? There's one. You got to sit. But you can see, even if they get their hand in the way, it still continues to grow. OK? All right? All right, so bring my pails back. Give them to those gentlemen over there. Give your pails to him. Joe, take this one this way. And bring this one, bring this one around. It's, it should be plugged in. Are we uh, working here? Why don't we have that working? Bring it on, plug it in. No, that's all right. Just leave it. We'll, we'll uh, hopefully it'll come back here. Just leave it plugged in. All right. Just move it back against the board. Okay. So this is our last demonstration. We need three volunteers. No, it goes ahead, ahead, ahead. Help him, help him, he's not doing right. They get those and a pair of glasses. So open, 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 this one running. Why aren't we running? We'll, we'll make it run. What is this? 
valve open? Yep, go, 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 go. Why aren't we running? There, okay. All right. So hopefully we get everything going here. All right, so what we've got is three vacuum cannons. Each cannon, or I guess we shouldn't call them cannons, we should call them vacuum accelerators. All right? We got our people mic'd up here. All right, you need to stand back over here. Vincent and Danielle, help them. In each vacuum cannon, right down here at the end by the valve system is a ping pong ball, okay? What we have is the end sealed up with packing tape so that we can evacuate and take the air out of the inside of the tube, okay? What we're gonna do is our three volunteers here, when I give the word, are gonna puncture the membrane down at this end. Our atmosphere is gonna rush in at 15 pounds per square inch, which means about 30 pounds of force is going to push this ping pong ball down through each tube. Hopefully, we can destroy some pop cans in the process. Okay, so, you guys gotta get up here. Get up here, give them all their instructions. All right. You will need these. You will need those. When I give you the sign, you need to be able to do it one at a time. Nope. All at once. All at once. All at once. So I'm going to say go, and I want you to poke it in there. So uh, you got her? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right, so is everybody ready but not yet? Don't do nothing yes. yet. Yes. Everybody ready? Yes. Set. Go. Woo. All right. All right, so now get the pumps out of the way. So guys, come down here and see what you did to your cans. Okay, the little, the little accelerator, this one here, that was you, right? So come here, you get to hold this and show people what happened to your can. You gotta face the audience. Here's the uh, second can, you get to hold that too. And we dented the third can, so it went through two and a half cans for him. Who did this one? Was that you? All right. You can take your stuff off. Very good, just set it on the table. So here is, her first can, show everybody the hole. Here is her second can, you can hold that up too. And here is her third can. We got about halfway through that. And since your mom won't let me take, let you take those home, you get to take the ball that's left of it home. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, give it to me. I should take off the shards of metal. Okay. So the third person, come on down here. Take your stuff off. Didn't fire. Yeah. Now. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We'll make sure we got everything going right. If it gets down to zero, it should or a thirty, it should go. Pick your blade up. All right, are we ready? Second. Go. Excellent. Now come down here. One misfire. So here is your first can. Second can, not looking too good. Third can, we actually made it all the way through the third can, but it not quite so that the ball made it all the way through. But we punctured the can all the way. And we got a little dent in this one. Unfortunately, here's all that's left of her ping pong ball. There you go, thank you.
Here, you can have this ping pong ball. <clears throat> All right, so, like I said, we're gonna have some of this stuff move back in here so that you can come and play with it, but first we're gonna have our raffle so our SPS people, wherever they are, uh, can come down and take care of that.